Hello guys and welcome to Ready Set Test. Yet again another video about the accessories that I'm using for my FPV and as you have seen or if you have seen my earlier video about the V2 the Pro viewing goggles you must have noticed the presence of this little beauty the Quantum 5.8 gigahertz diversity receiver. I've been using this for the last month or so this is my first and only video receiver and I went for diversity let's face it there is absolutely no point in going for a single receiver if you can get a diversity for just a little bit more it gives you an option of changing antennas on the fly and it decides the best outcome for your video and puts it onto your screen I think it's a beautiful technology and if you can have it you should I've heard good things about the quantum uh, diversity receiver and that's one of the reasons why I bought it after doing my research but as I am showing it to you right now it comes in this little box in here inside is this one mysteriously that nobody seems to know what it actually does but it is there it also comes with a standard AV lead you will know what to do with this this goes into your video ins or video outs from the VTX and also a little wire here that goes into the power and you can basically connect any kind of connector to the end of it that will fit your lipo in my case I'm using a 3s lipo but as you will find out this has a very very high voltage range speaking of voltage let's go into the little manual that comes with it and right at the very top of it there's a few bits of information like the modulation is FM the antenna connector is an SMA jack this is very important to remember because when you'll be buying antennas you have to refer to that one and supply voltage is 6 to 18 volts what does that mean that means that you can use anywhere between a two cell and a four cell lipo huge range of voltage for this thing now remember if you're using it in conjunction with the v2 pro then you have to keep in mind the voltage of the tv screen as well but on its own this can take a huge amount of range of lipos to work on now i need to also show you the antennas that it comes with uh, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the bane of the FPV world. The rubber ducky, aka linear polarized antennas. Every single FPV accessory that you will buy comes attached with these things. Now I get it, maybe they're cheap to make, so they put them on that. But I think by now everybody should realize that these things, for all intents and purposes, are absolutely rubbish. Nobody ever uses them. And if you're buying a lot of FPV material, eventually you're going to end up with a mound of these things. I don't know what you can use them as, but I mean, over the top of it, I can think chopsticks would be a good idea. You know, 5.8 gigahertz noodles. <laughs> That's a thought to think about. Another thing to remember also is on the, on the little manual in here, operating temperature is mentioned at 40 degrees centigrade. Right at the bottom, if you can see, if my camera can focus. 40 degrees centigrade operating temperature and I have noticed that while you're using is this thing does get warm in fact in some places hot so if you're watching it in a country where the temperature goes routinely over 40 degrees centigrade then well you might want to consider taking a fan to the field with you make sure the fan works on lipo though <laughs> uh, it's not an outrageous idea you want to keep yourself cool but just keep in mind the operating temperature has been written over there as well now let's give this thing power and see what it does because it comes with an OLED screen very bright good for the field in daytime when you need to see something but as I found out not very good to be filmed uh, let's check it out anyway so we will give it the power now and just for reference I'm using a three cell lipo there we go power comes into it as you can see there's the red LED on right now there's no video signal coming to this so as we are focusing on it right now let's check out quickly what's happening at the top right 11.4 11.3 fluctuating that's your battery uh, voltage 19 and 16 percent on your left hand side up top this is the RSSI level remember there's no video coming in so RSSI level is showing very low D25685 that's the video channel that is latched on to well not latched on to at the minute but that's what is programmed because that's the frequency of my video transmitter and div mode or diversity mode 2 is that second receiver is on at the moment remember it has two receivers right on the back of the unit you will see antenna 1 and antenna 2 written on it so you can determine from there what kind of receiver you're using at the moment 
Right. Now, if we can focus on this thing, and as you see down here in the bottom, there's a red button. This is a clicker and a cursor at the same time. So I'll get this into focus, get the menu, channel scan. This is where you scan your channel to find your video. Diversity, that's the diversity mode, dot the diversity RSSI. Well, obviously you want to keep it in the diversity mode because that's when it decides on its own which channel to use, or sorry, which receiver to use, depending on the best RSSI that's coming to it. Now, exactly opposite to it is independent. Independent mode means that this receiver, this uh, video receiver, becomes two. It operates as two independent receivers. So you can get two independent AV outs out of it. Now, that could be useful to some people, but I haven't tried it. Spectrum Analyzer. We know all a Spectrum Analyzer is. There's a lot in the market and they're expensive pieces of kit. Now, if you're jumping for joy that you've got yourself a Spectrum Analyzer for the price of a video receiver, well, it's not very sensitive. You can rely on it a little bit, but not too much. Script Low Level RSSI. This is where it actually starts beeping that your RSSI level is low. If you come down and go to Next, this is where some handy bits of information comes in. Look. Battery max, you want to, the battery max is what it is. You can, you can put it down at 12.6 for a 3S. Battery minimum is important because when your battery reaches a minimum voltage, it will start beeping. You want to know that, so set that up. Now, the battery mode and the RSSI mode, I've put them to digits, right? And digits is important because if you don't do digits, they will actually start showing percentage. Percentage, in my opinion, is not very accurate. So you want to see numbers and RSSI beep, there you go. It's You can have an RSSI beep on that one too. And that's just about it. Or unless, of course, you want to go to the previous menu. Remember, the cursor doesn't go sideways. It only goes up and down. So if you want to jump from exit to preview, you want to come down. Uh, previous, you want to come down. So we just exit out of this in here. Now, obviously, right now, and it's in a bit of a redundant mode. So my aeroplane is in another room. I'm going to go and give it some power and turn on the video transmitter. And then we come back to this little thing and look at it in action. Now everyone, as you can see, two lights have turned on on top of the receiver. One on my left is blue and the other one is red. They are quite bright, so you might not be able to determine the color very properly. This means that this thing is now latching onto a signal. Everything else is the same. It hasn't changed very much, but diversity mode is still two because it means the antenna two is still active. But the thing that has changed is up top. You can see 100, and 100%. That means the RSSI is 100 on both receivers. Both receivers are getting 100% signal right now. As I mentioned before, my plane is literally just in the living room. So that's why this is happening. Apart from that, nothing else changes, but I just wanted to show you that this is the operating mode. Now, remember I mentioned the changing of the RSSI and the changing of the antennas. Now, how does that work? How does it change it? Do you have any say in it? Well, as it turns out, you do. How fast do you want that change to happen and how long do you want the receiver to wait before that change comes into effect is something that you can choose. Another best part about this receiver. But if you're not aware of it, you won't be able to find that kind of information. As it turns out, to access that, you have to go into a, ah, a secret menu. Now, uh, don't go reading any Darren Brown novels about that. It's not that secret. It's basically a little thing that you have to do to get into it. So I will show you right now. Well, let's go into the service menu. Keep the button pressed and introduce power to it. There we go. We're in test mode now. The menus that you see in blue are screen test, speaker test, LED test, all basically tests to carry out, see if all the devices in the system are working properly, the loudness of the speaker and the pixel ratio and the brightness of the screen. What we need to go into though, is set up diversity level right at top in yellow color. Click on that and you will see these menus. RSSI LED level, diversity level, and diversity time. Very, very important. The top one RSSI LED level, this is the level of RSSI present at which the blue LED will turn on. There's a blue LED on top of the receiver. You've already seen that. So that's the RSSI LED level. Diversity level, this is the level of diversity available on which this will switch. 
It's basically taken from hysteses or hysteses, the magnetic induction formula where the actual value of something starts lagging behind its own effect. Uh, you can read about it in detail, but what it's trying to say in here is that this is the amount of hysteresis or diversity level reaching before it can change. I've put that down at five, so it's almost a 50% median. I don't want it to be too eager. At the same time, I don't want it to be too lazy. So you want to keep it at five. Seems to work quite well for me because as you can see, I'm using uh, a circular polarized antenna and a patch one. The third one is diversity time. This is put down at 10. This can go all the way to 15. Every single unit is not a second, but it represents one one hundredth of a second. So keep that in mind. When you go from 10 to 9, you're not going from 10 seconds to 9 seconds. You're going from 10, well, that would be a thousandth. Uh, the way you got to look at it is that every unit is one hundredth of a second. So if you're going down, you're becoming faster. If you're going up, you're becoming slower. 10 again is probably a median in there somewhere seems to work for me. I think the the, the very internal value would be 7.5. Again, as I said, as I go down from 10 to 9 to 8 to 7 to 6, your change time becomes faster. Go higher from 10, it becomes slower. And the negative points are if you make it too fast, it will jump around like crazy. You won't be even able to enjoy your video very much because it'll be jumping, changing between them crazy. And it also makes some little vibration on the screen when it does that. And if you make it too slow, the changes wouldn't happen or it'll be too late and your video would have been too distorted before the change happens. So that's basically what it is, a supplemental menu. I will put a little link for the download of the manual. You can actually download it on your computer and read it in detail. It is available. To exit out of this menu, just disconnect power. And when you connect power to it again, there you go. You're back into normal thing. Now, guys, before I finish this video, I'm just going to say sorry for the focus issues on this thing. But believe me, it's the LEDs in here. They're quite bright and they do make videoing this a little bit difficult. But apart from that, I've tried to give you as much as I know about this system. Uh, it's in my current use. I've lived with it for about a month now. Can I nitpick on this thing? Yeah, you can sit down and nitpick, but I don't just want to nitpick for the sake of it. You know, I don't want to come across as a as a really harsh and skeptic tester. To be honest with you, for the price that it's being charged for, it is it is very good. It is a great product. There's a little gripe that it's not available in local warehouses from Hobby King, but apart from that, I can't really pull any uh, punches with this thing. It's, it's quite good. Uh, and yet again, I'm glad you've stayed with me on this video. Thank you very much. Uh, and if this has helped you in any way, then... Uh, that's a lot of appreciation towards me. Thanks very much, guys. Catch you on another video on Ready, Set, Test soon. Take care.